Shares of Axon Enterprise are up about 5% in pre-market trading after the company reported earnings last night. So what did the company have to reveal and what does it mean for shareholders? We'll take the next 10 minutes to find out. My name is Brian Stoffel, and as of the time of this recording, I do own shares of Axon Enterprise. In fact, it is my second largest position. Thanks to Y Charts for sponsoring today's video. More from Y Charts in just a minute. So this is Axon's fourth quarter of fiscal 2022, and after today's open, it'll be about a $15 billion company. Growth was impressive to say the least. Now the company got a little bit of a help from some unrecognized revenue in the past, but even so, top line grew 54%, which was well ahead of Wall Street's and management's own guidance. It was the same story on the bottom line. Uh, 70 cents per share was up 52%, much more than Wall Street was expected. And management just guided for free cash flow of s about 75 million. That came in at almost 120 million, so they definitely beat their guidance there as well. Let's look at margins. Gross margins took ever so slightly ticked down. This is not unusual with the mix of tasers, stun guns, and then that high margin software, depending on how the sales go in the quarter, that can affect this. But overall, nothing to worry about there. On a gap, again, a gap basis, which includes stock-based compensation, operating margins swung from a loss of 12% to a gain of about seven. Same basic story with the net margin coming in at about 9%. Uh, if we look at free cash flow, it was a tiny loss in the year ago quarter. Again, about 120 million in free cash flow this year. Net income went from a loss of 14 million to a gain of 29 million. And the company did take on uh, quite a bit of debt during the quarter. Uh, that was not surprising, and it wasn't a bad move either, given the fact that its uh, stock price is up so much. Its net cash position actually gained from the previous quarter, but it has a net cash position of about $300 million. Now, one thing we want to point out is that the company came out and said that their total addressable market, their TAM, is about $50 billion. And about half of that is in software as a service. They have their evidence.com and then their dispatch and their Axon records. And then they have their cameras, their Axon cameras, AR, VR training, their tasers. And then over here is personal protection. Now, why is that important? Because a few quarters ago, the company said that this could actually be its largest market. That was something that had a lot of people, myself included, kind of scratching our heads. Not sure quite how comfortable I am uh, with the thought of myself, my wife, my kids one day carrying tasers around. So I'm glad that they dialed back their expectations there and are instead focusing on software, which I think is what's gonna help them accomplish their moonshot goal of having the number of deaths between police and the people that they are responsible for serving by 2030. Now, let's look at these three business lines. The gray one here is Taser. It used to be known as Taser International. That's grown at about a 24% clip over these past couple of years with a gross margin of 63%. Sensors and others basically acts on body cameras. As you can see, those are lower margin, um, but it is growing quite well. But the real story here is the software as a service. Once you use evidence.com for the film that police uh, capture with their body cameras once they use Axon Records to autofill the records, dispatch to make sure that people are getting where they need to be. Those are hard to replace. Uh, and it's growing at a 41% clip with very good margins. And if you back out the service margin, and the service margin is where Axon will send people to the companies in order to teach them how to do it, the gross margins are about 80%. And you can see that that growth was impressive across the board. The cloud grew 65% and margins expanded to about 75.5%. Sensors and others, that's Axon body cameras, 90% growth in sales and their margins expanded as well from 39.3 to 41.5. Tasers, uh, that's their most mature category, but it still grew 32%. Margins did take a slight step back. That's nothing huge to worry about. They also announced that their Taser 10 was being released in bundles moving forward. Here are some really important numbers. Annual recurring revenue was up 45%. And you'll see why that's really important in a minute. Net revenue retention came in, that's basically like dollar-based revenue retention, came in at 121%, the highest it's been in quite a while. Again, that means they're holding on to, not only holding on to all their customers, 
but getting them on average to spend 21% more per year. And total future contract revenue, which is like remaining performance obligations, look at this, that grew 66% as they're going international and getting and finding uses for their cameras and software solutions, especially outside of police forces and to government agencies. The annual recurring revenue from software as a service is growing at a 45% clip. And look at this. This is the total revenue tied to subscription bundles. That's where your tasers, your evidence.com, your body cameras, your dashboard cameras are all part of the same bundle. And the only area that's not in this recurring revenue right now is consumer, new, and emerging markets. So this is very much a almost strictly subscription business now. Um, if we look towards guidance, uh, management did not provide guidance for the first quarter. Wall Street expects the top line to grow 22%. I wouldn't be surprised to see that revised upwards and the bottom line growing 13%. For the full year, management didn't provide earnings guidance, but they did say that they would grow at least 20%. In fact, they said that they would grow at least 20% in 2023, 2024, and 2025 to reach $2 billion in sales by then. That was more than Wall Street was expecting, and Wall Street's expecting that bottom line to grow 32%. So what should investors watch moving forward? Well, first and foremost, that cloud revenue is key. It is has huge switching costs, a very wide moat around it, and very high margins. Second, look for traction in international agencies and non-police department agencies. Uh, those are increasingly driving some of the growth. Third, kind of tied to that second one, is remaining performance obligations or future contracted revenue. It grew at 66%. All I'm looking for, what I'd like to see, is that growing at about the same pace as revenue, perhaps even faster. And fourth, free cash flow. The company is investing a lot because it believes it has a huge opportunity in front of it, but I still want to see it be free cash flow positive. Overall, there's no question in my mind that the moat is widening and the thesis is very, very, very much on track. Now, when we get to to anti, our anti-fragility score, it gets a 12 and a half. That is a very good score. But let's think about where this company is in its growth cycle. Right now, I would argue that it's moving from self-funding to focusing on operating leverage. That means that while it's positive operating income, positive net income, it's not optimized for that. In fact, it's even a stretch to say it's optimized for gross profit growth because it's investing so much in its future capabilities, which means price to sales, price to gross profit, and really just price to free cash flow are the most telling uh, metrics to look at. And for that, we're going to head on over to Y Charts. Um, y Charts says that before today was trading for about 13.4 uh, times sales after today, it'll be about 12.4. That's no doubt high. If we go to the company's gross profit before uh, today, it was about $658 million. Now it's about 730. We divide that by the market cap and we get a price to gross profit ratio of 20. Again, that is high. It lets you know why they decided to raise uh, uh uh, debt through an offering. Uh, the company's price to free cash flow is now after today, because free cash flow grew so much, went from about 243 to 82. So even price to free cash flow is not the most reliable metric because they're investing so much. When I did a reverse discounted cash flow model, what I saw with yesterday's price is that the company's implied growth rate for free cash flow is about 25%. And so I have to ask myself uh, now, how reasonable is that growth rate? I think that that lands, mm, it, it's, I think it's reasonable, but it takes a little bit of the margin of safety away. So I'll subtract a half point, but still it lands me at a score of a 12, which means that this is a very, very, very high quality company and one that I have no intention of parting ways with anytime soon. Based on management's estimates of $2 billion by 2025, about a 25% free cash flow margin. That's about, uh, basically what, what the company says is that they're going to be able to have about $500 uh, million in free cash flow by the time we reach 2025. Can they accomplish that? We'll wait and see. If they do, today's price will probably look like a bargain. Uh, but that's all on this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give a thumbs up if you like this. It helps us get discovered. It's about 90 days till we check back in with this, this one. Brian?